joining us here on a very special episode of the CNBC TV 18 weekend. I travel all the way to Bangalore to speak to Vivek Gupta, the MD and CEO of United Breweries, a little over a year after he's taken over at the helm of the company. Thank you so much, Vivek. Thank you for choosing to spend Diwali with us. Wish you and your team a very happy Diwali. Oh, thank you, and thank you for having me. Wish you a very happy Diwali and prosperous New Year. I wanted to understand if you could sum up your learnings of the industry that have happened in the last one year, because it's very interesting, you know. Um, everything is counterintuitive. Beer is supposed to be had in hot weather. India is a hot country. But still, it's just 20% of the market, as against globally, 50%. What have your learnings been? I think my learning is it's a highly underpenetrated category, and it's a, it's a huge potential. My second learning is beer is different from Alcobev. Okay. I think when we combine beer and Alcobev, I think we, we dilute the, the magic of beer. The beer is all about creating connections, about moderation in alcohol. Beer is very local as compared to do, so there's a huge opportunity in beer. Uh, the other big learning is highly regulated category. So one of our key customers uh, are government and regulators, and we need to bring them on the journey on how beer actually helps uh, farmers, local employment, and that's why I'm, I'm very, very excited on the opportunity we have in front of beer. If you could give us a sense of, you know, how underpenetrated is beer versus all the other spirits, and what is the potential market size out here? If people drink 10 times a year, hmm. any, any alcohol, let's say beer, spirits, wine, uh, vodka, whatever you add to that, there's only two times out of 10 right. they actually drink beer. Even if we double the share of incidence from right. two to four, you have a huge market which is ready to explode. So today there are almost 400 to 450 uh, crore cases right. of beer which sell every year. This can actually double by just improving the share of incidence and making sure that people stick to the category for longer. Now the difficult question, what are you doing to ensure that this becomes 450 to 900? Yeah, I think there are three big barriers in beer, as I understand. I think number one barrier is affordability. Right. Beer is very expensive. In fact, it is, uh, if you go overseas, the, the price of beer could be even cheaper than water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in India, the beer is very expensive, and, and the big factor there is taxation on beer, you know, as compared to, uh, you know, spirits is, is very high in certain states. The second is availability of beer. Right. You know, uh, we know that in the tier two, tier three towns, the beer is less available because beer is sold when it is cold. Okay. So for us, we are actually significantly increasing the number of coolers we are going to deploy in the stores. Right. We are going to triple the number of coolers, and our vision is that every single store which sells beer, there should be a cold fridge of Kingfisher or Henneken or Amstel of our brand. So you have around 80,000 stores in the country that sell alcohol? Yeah, uh, there are around 102,000 stores which sell beer. And of which, how many are on trade, how many are off trade, how many have busy coolers, how many don't have busy coolers? So our last data is only 20,000 stores have branded coolers. Okay. And we want to take it to 60,000 in the next two years. And, and then how get much to does one cost, one busy cooler cost, the installation of um, it? It depends. We are actually looking at new technologies which can keep the beer cooler than, you know, at minus two degrees centigrade. And that right. costs around 65 to 70,000 rupees to install a busy cooler. So for every 70,000 that I spend on a Vizi cooler, what is uh, the expected return, increase in sale? You know, the stores which have Vizi coolers, the category grows around 2% more than the stores which don't have Vizi coolers. Okay. So we, we have done our back of envelope cat, but the way we look at it is a long-term investment to build category. Right. And the on-premises, around 25, 26,000 outlets. We really want to make sure people try the beer, you know, they, they have more fun, we are investing in activities, we sponsor IPL, so we are engaging with the young consumers. And the last one is we know that beer consumption drops with age. Right. So we are also looking at our communication and innovation program. You've uh, also announced one of your biggest launches, which is Amstel Grande. I, I wanted to understand what's the opportunity here, what proportion of your revenue comes from premium right now, and what's your internal target? I would say that uh, over the last few months, we have done detailed consumer work to really understand what are the needs of consumer. Right. And that's where all our innovation is based on a consumer insight. And the, 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 for example, the Queen Fisher, which right. we launched as a premium beer, was based on a simple insight that the beer penetration in women is very small. And then we asked some of our women brewers right. to actually design the beer which they would like. And then we actually had a product based on that insight. Similarly, Amstel Grande is going to be one of our best beer mm. uh, in, the, in the premium strong segment. 
Uh, this is one of the beer which is designed for India, but it has international credential. Uh, the whole claim is the slowly brewed beer. How big can it be? Oh, it can be the biggest premium brand in the category. So, which is the biggest premium brand in the category right now? What is the rough market for that? Yeah, I would say that the, uh, the, the total premium size, premium category is around 17 to 18 percent okay. of, the, of the beer segment to really do that. Our competitors have some of the big brands like Budweiser, Magnum and... and uh, How company. big would that be according to you, roughly back of the envelope? Uh, you know, around 35 to 40 million cases, you know. Um, and this has the potential of being that? Yeah, this could be a potential. I, I would say that segment is 35 to 40, but this has a potential over years to be one of the biggest brand in the whole sector. How many years? Because right now you're just in Mumbai and I think over the next uh, you know, couple of years you plan to get to 60 to 70 percent of the country. It depends on the production footprint and the success and the learnings we get from the first launch. Right. There is a registration process, there's a pricing process in the part, there's a local production. But more importantly, we think over the next four to five years, this would become one of our biggest brand in the premium segment. Uh, overall market is 17 to 18 percent. What proportion of your revenue is coming from premium and where would you like to take that? See, our goal is that we would like the premium to be at least 20 percent of our business. Uh, currently, it's around 8 to 10 percent of our business. So we okay. want to double our premium business over the next two to three years. We are not only accelerating the category growth, but we are also growing within the segment and we are, uh, we are growing consumers in the premium as well. Since you're talking about gaining share, could you give us an updated share that you have across major markets, say south, north, east, west, and where are you expecting that to head? Like we are around 48, 49 share in the total market, uh, but it varies by state. In states right. we are growing, in some states we are not growing shares. Karnataka was an issue, you were now back above 50% in Karnataka? Uh, no, we are not yet. Our la latest shares are close to 45, 46 in Karnataka. And, and you still intend to, to get do. to 50%? See, I think, as I said, our number one focus as a company right. is to be the category maker, not the category taker. Right. So our number one focus is, is the category growing fast enough? Are we bringing everything which is required to grow the category? Uh, with all that you're doing and with all the launches that you're coming about, the overall volume growth is just 5%. You in the conference call itself, and I quote you, yeah. said that you are happy with it, but you're not proud of it. Yes. You, your expectation is a lot more than just 5%. Right. What is that expectation? What impacts the category and why I said that I'm not very proud of it is the impact of regulatory in certain states. Like West Bengal is a great example right. where category was actually booming and then uh, recently the, the state government increased the duties on beer which was already very high. So the affordability of beer became a, a, a big challenge which has slowed down the category growth and then it impacts the volume growth, not only for us, but for the industry. So there are states who are actually increasing the duties on beer and making right. beer less affordable. That really discourages the volume growth on the beer. I mean, there is a principle in economics uh, called the Laffer curve, where as the tax rate increases, the revenue increases only up till a certain point. Thereafter, an increase in tax rate means that maybe counterfeit goes away or consumption uh, you know, reduces. And as a result of which, the total revenue that the government generates reduces. Have you had conversations? So look, I think uh, I'm pretty sure there are smart people who are running the government and, right. and, and their excise are doing on that. I would say that there are three big areas we are focusing on. Right. Number one is don't club beer with all alcohol. Do we want the youngsters and the young India who's coming to this category to drink highly, you know, very high alcohol beverages or country liquor or we, do we really want them to have moderate consumption and, uh, you know, beer and have more socialization versus, you right. know, getting, again, I was saying getting drunk to, get, drinking it to get drunk. Of course, we understand that a lot of governments are also have their own budgetary pressures, but we're also trying to collect the data, share the data, consistently engage with them. We have seen some positive shoots. So, for example, in Assam, when they increased the duties and the similar impact happened. Right. The government rolled back some of the duties back in August, and we are seeing the categories coming back to that. So we are using the one case study and sharing the data with the others. We are consistently engaging. So we have states where we actually grew double digit, and we have states where we declined because of this impact. And that is why I'm a bit disappointed, because the category is up for, for growth, and we just need to collectively work. The impact of regulations on our business um, in, during the election time, I, as, as I mentioned, it was around four to five points of growth we lost because of right. the disruptions. 
this quarter also because of some of these weather and changes is there. So I, I think category can grow double digit okay. if, 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 if there is more, uh, you know, collaboration and there is more uh, intent on, on the programs, it can grow double digit. Uh, on barley, let's address that first. The prices have been fairly volatile. Do you see some moderation coming in or some stability coming in barley prices right now? And secondly, what is it that you're doing structurally to ensure long-term availability of barley at a relatively more stable price? One of the big initiatives which I'm really proud of is we, we are actually working with farmers okay. uh, in Rajasthan, in Haryana, in Punjab, uh, even in UP now mm -hmm. where the barley is getting produced to actually increase the area which is sown under Bali. We're also doing a lot of work with the universities, like Punjab Agriculture Universities, ICAR, with some of the professors to really understand, uh, you know, what is the best quality of seeds we can have on Bali. Right. So in the long term, our plan is to actually have more backward integration, really work with farmers, which really help them. How much is it right now, and what is your aspiration? So right now, we work with around 10,000 farmers. Our goal is to get to 50,000 farmers by, you know, in, in the next in terms of year. your procurement, how much do those 10,000 farmers contribute? And So our current procurement is only... 8 to 10 percent which is coming from locally from those farmers right but we also work with other farmers who don't directly work with us only right. to really procure it our 70 to 80 percent of procurement is local we still have to import it you know uh, 15 to 20 percent of barley and uh, and this is a huge opportunity for us because our analysis show that if if we put our minds to it india can be actually the net exporter of barley in years okay. to come so you target uh, self-sufficiency in barley by when See, our goal is to actually be self-sufficient in the next seven to eight years. But there is a lot of intent uh, on this area with the government. So that's one key area. But in the short term, I think the commodities will remain volatile. The second big thing you talk about is the glass prices. Right. I think for us, the biggest cost element is also the return bottles. Return bottles. And that is something which I really think is will make or break the economics for us. Break the economics of a glass bottle for you. Say yeah. a glass bottle costs X for you. Yeah. Uh, how many times do you try and reuse it? What is your proportion of return bottles right now? And how much does it? How much more does it cost for you to introduce a new bottle into the system? Yeah, I think a roughly a new bottle costs around 70 to 18 rupees per bottle. Okay. And uh, the total system cost of a return bottle is around 7 to 8 rupees. Now, we, of course, have very strong quality processes in place. Mm -hmm. So we are not fixated that whether we have to use the return bottle five times, eight times. The average is it can use, uh, you know, four to five times. Got it. Our current return rate is, is somewhere between uh, 65 to 70 percent depending on Got the it. state pre-covid this number was closer to 80 percent and that's one of the area we are consistently working on because you also remember that this also creates employment from pre-covid to now a lot of alcohol consumption has become at home as against restaurants restaurants obviously have a better way to return those bottles as against consumption at home if you could give us an impact on that and what is your target here from say 70 percent where do you intend to take it in the very near future yeah i would say there are many factors one of the big factor is exactly as you said that you know in home consumption yeah uh, versus the consumption on the bar but again i'm saying this is something which uh, you know the we can raise the awareness campaign and there's a lot of work which municipal corporations are doing in collecting waste so our, our problem is more in, more in big cities okay. and in specific states so i think it's pretty much uh, it's quite manageable see we really want to improve this to 75 percent right. but you know uh, this year we are able to improve by one point only one or two points but it's a consistent battle a percent in you know return bottles increase percent increase in return bottles improves your EBITDA margin by how much all things being equal I've, I've not done the EBITDA math but I you know it does help our uh, you know uh, gross margins by a close to I think 0 0.2, 0 0.3 points to do that. So, net, net, what is your margin target? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Yeah, see, I think, look, you know, uh, the two things are, our target is to really drive double-digit revenue growth right. significantly and be the category maker. Got it. And I think, uh, you know, we have internal targets, but there's a glide path on the margin, but of course, you know, uh, we should what, expect what's consistent the end goal to on the glide path. I think we should be in the range of 10 to 12% margins. Over the next foreseeable future? Over the next five, six years, four, five years, gradually. We, okay. should, we should work towards that. But right now, the focus is on uh, growth. growth with consistent margin improvement. So I would rather right. improve 
60, 70 basis point of margin every year. If I'm, I'm going too high on margins, probably, you know, I have to ask the question, I'm actually, is the beer affordable? Right. I, am I actually giving that, uh, you know, everything what I've talked about? To, to be a category maker here. Right, that's incredible. What we'll do is we'll take a short break, come yeah. back, and then yeah. we continue our conversation with Vivek Gupta. Welcome back. We're still in conversation with Vivek Gupta of United Breweries. Vivek, what do you quantify or what do you see as the revenue mix for your organization, say, five years from now? Geographically, state-wise, and say, uh, you know, uh, premium mass and the new brands that you have i think our goal is to be to drive the category growth year on year year on year the size of the category should be much bigger than what it is should okay. be there so I it's 450 case, 450 crore cases right now yeah how I, much do you expect it to be you know i think our goal is to 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 get this to a 600 to 700 crore category you know, so we need to also make sure that the production is lined up by the players to do that have so you i think have any production because currently you are nearly double the other two players, uh, when it comes to factory presence, when it comes to you know presence in all the states, etc., as well, um, have you lined up any capex? So while we have the highest number of breweries, uh, there are some states where we are full on capacity. Right. Like whatever we produce, we can sell. So we have plans on expanding capacity in states like Telangana is one state where we have a gross, two low gross margin market. And that's why we are working with the government on uh, you know viability of the business, but at the same time the potential is huge. We are also looking at states like West Bengal, where we don't premium have premium presence. Very low. Yeah. Very low to really improve our production capacity because uh, whatever we have, we produce and we, we sell that. We are looking at states like Madhya Pradesh, hmm. uh, you know, to where we don't have our own factory. Okay. We are really looking at, and our shares are very low. We are only 15 share in Madhya Pradesh versus 50 share in the country. Right. So we are working with our local partners, but we are also looking at options. Uh, to invest and expand, uh, you but know, you have a the budget on how much you are looking at in terms of capacity uh, investment. Look, we have a very aggressive plan. I can only tell you that right now my issue is not how much money I need. My issue is the ability to execute the money right. I have, because every capital, every change in the brewery, even to repair or maintenance, you need excise approval. Uh, our plan is to invest at least two x uh, to three x of the capital what we have invested in the last two to three years. You can do the math. All right. Uh, Andhra, how much did that account for your overall volumes in the earlier regime? And now that their earlier regime is back, how much do you expect to get from here? At the peak of the season and versus what we do, we do one third of what we were doing at the peak okay. season. But I know that uh, we don't want to be lethargic about it. We don't want to be complacent about it. So Andhra uh, can be 3x of... Oh yeah, I think it can case. be 3x of our current potential, but we can't be complacent. We really need How to make sure. How much is Andhra as a proportion of your volumes, even at 1x right now? I would say 3%, 4%, okay. 2, 2 to 3%, so it can be a substantial so increase. So it can be about 6-7%, uh, while everyone else grows and Andhra grows at uh, a substantial pace from here. Substantial pace on this. So we right now are making sure that we have the right portfolio, we are making sure that uh, you know, we work with the government because one of the biggest issue in Andhra hmm. uh, is from old regime, you call it, or old time to new time, the taxation has increased significantly on beer. Okay. In fact, the net realization uh, is lowest for us in Andhra. You know, so the, even the taxes are heavier than some of the other states. Why is it that beer is taxed at par with spirits when alcohol proportion in beer is a lot lower? And it, 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 all the alcohol is taxed on the volume basis where beer is a lot lighter. Why is it that has happened? You know, I, I'm asking the same question. Thank you for being <laughs> a, you know, I, I'm confused why is that. I, I actually think I would put the blame on us. Probably we as a company uh, and uh, the beer industry, we haven't, uh, uh, you know, uh, have advocated uh, for this taxation. But has no for state thing. ever tried doing it on the proportion of alcohol. I remember Haryana putting out something. So there are a couple of states who did it yeah. and they can see a different different level What's of growth rate. There? I have seen that there are states where, you know, beer growth, uh, when the taxes was more in line with the part is significantly higher than what was not there. And when the taxation has increased, say, in Maharashtra, right. for example, in the last few years, uh, you know, and the delta has increased between beer and spirits, mm -hmm. the category has, has slowed down significantly as compared to what it used to be. Globally, Heineken has earmarked India as 
one of their priority markets. Uh, is it the priority market in the region? Is it the priority market in the world? Given their optimism, I'm sure they would like to, you know, up the ante in India. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, uh, Hen for Henneken globally, India is, uh, if not the most important, but uh, amongst the top three priority countries uh, in the world. So it is, uh, it is definitely on that radar. Are they willing uh, to up their stake further? You know, I, I don't know that investing in India is only about upping the no, stake, but it's about the capability to, yeah. to really do that. We, you know, I think our, our focus is to the investments which have been there, there is definitely a return for those investments okay. to start with, but also continuously invest in growing the category. Uh, we are very confident uh, that there is, there is a global support. The Amstel Grande is a great example. Right. Hanikan Silver, which has done extremely well in Southeast Asia, China, and one of the growth story, you know, we are expanding Hanikan Silver. Right. We recently opened up our plant on, on producing Hanikan in Karnataka. Uh, you know, we are further going to expand the footprint of Hanikan brand uh, in the country. Earlier in the m many conversations that we had, we said Hanikan is very underpenetrated. Uh, underpenetrated. We want Hanikan's contribution to increase. So, where are we on that? So, I think first of all, we are producing locally in Hanikan in four locations, yes. uh, and you know, we have just started launch in Karnataka. We have a very good footprint in uh, in Goa, Maharashtra, Mumbai, and we are also planning to expand the footprint. Okay. Now, growth rate on Hennekan Silver in Goa is 67%. All right. So it's it's definitely uh, growing very very fast. But it's on a very small base as well. Right? Yeah, but we have a we have a we are sizable share now uh, of Hennekan in uh, in the states where we have launched. It continues to grow. It's one of our big bet uh, in the premium segment. So as I talked, as we as we have aspiration. To, to be the market leader on premium and, and to have premium as almost 20 to 25 percent of our business, right. you know, the Amstel, uh, Hanikan, and our domestic premium brands, Ultra and Ultra Max, uh, will play a significant, significant role. So, if role you on that. had to break down that 20 percent into how much should come from Hanikan, how much do you expect from Amstel, how much do you expect from your local brands already, how would that be? 50 percent from local brands, 5 percent? Uh, I mean, I, I think it would be, a, uh, it would be around 60 40 because. Uh, ultra the local and yeah, okay. ultra and ultra max are are doing extremely well yes. they have been in the country for more than 10 years and then as i said amstel and hanikan you know they will fight for the uh, for, which will be the biggest brand but i think our amstel footprint right. uh, will be will be faster than our hanikan footprint and amstel will be produced locally as well yeah absolutely in our current breweries we have the technology to produce amstel could you could you share some experience in the past where you you believe that you know you made a serious difference for one to understand you know the resilient sterner stuff you know you look I, I think it's not a you know it's a difficult experience it's a lot of a learning experience right. i'm a father of an, a special need autistic child right. and i think we are very blessed to have him and i think it was a great experience as a parent uh, because it changed your life uh, because you have you know when you have special need kids Right. You really need to make them, you know, really work with them so they are successful. And but at the same time, it gives you a lot of patience, resilience, priorities, uh, you know, on what you do and what you don't do. And and I think to me uh, that has been one of the things which has really made us better people. Right. And what are the things to chase and what are the things not to chase? Very personal to me as well, and I completely relate with that. My own brother is a special uh, child, so obviously I completely connect with what you are talking about out here, how they make you a lot better as people. And I'm jealous of you for one thing. You've, you've met Roger Federer twice? Yeah, I have, you know, we, uh, it was in Australia when, you know, the thanks to PNG when I was in, uh, you know, he was one of the ambassador for Gillette. Wow. And uh, we did organize a couple of events with him. Uh, you know, I have a privilege of actually, uh, with, with one of my colleagues to actually drop diapers Oh, wow. uh, for Mika, when, when they came to Australia, we were selling Pampers. Uh, he's a fantastic uh, person, a huge role model. And when was the second time you met him? Uh, again, in the Australian Open. And he remembered when we met him first time. <laughs> so, wow. so he invited uh, to actually join for his final game as well. That's incredible. What song do you think would describe you best? Yeah, I would say a couple of them. I think one is, uh, my favorite was Don't, Don't Worry, Be Happy. <laughs> And then the second one was during my young days was, uh, during school days was uh, Kadam Kadam Badaija. 
खुशी के गीत गाए जा ये जिंदगी है कॉम की कॉम पे लौटाए जा सो आई थिंक यू यू वांट टू सिंग दैट एज वी एंड द शो नो आई आई थिंक यू नो विवेक थैंक यू सो मच दिस इज बीन एन एब्सोल्यूट प्लेजर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग